This episode of This Printed Thing is sponsored by PCBWay. Do you have an idea that requires electronic parts? Let PCBWay help you design and prototype your PCBs. They also have other useful services available, like CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and 3D printing, just to name a few. Prototype the easy way with PCBWay. Hey YouTube, welcome back to This Printed Thing. My name's Mike, and if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you would know that I have become a Bamboo Lab fanboy. I've owned great printers from Anycubic and Prusa, but the moment I got my first Bamboo Lab printer, I decided, you know what? I'm bamboo all the way. So now I own a total of four. Three here and one over there. All four printers are X1 Carbons, and they've basically been able to sustain my entire workload for my Etsy shop. While these printers are really, really good, they are the first printer that was released by Bamboo Lab, and they're not perfect. Even Bamboo Lab, when they first launched this printer, on their website they said, is this printer perfect? No, they acknowledged that right away. But Bamboo Lab is a company full of great engineers that learn from their mistakes. And one of the mistakes I feel like they made on the X1 Carbon is the nozzle wiper. Basically what you have is a piece of PTFE tubing that's held up on a spring-loaded arm and the nozzle rubs across it and the hope is that this piece of PTFE tubing is going to knock off whatever's stuck to the nozzle. Well, usually it doesn't. One of the really cool features of the X1 Carbon is that it uses a LiDAR sensor to inspect your first layer after printing it to make sure that everything is okay. But the problem is that after it collects that data, it parks the print head over the poop chute, as people like to call it, because that's where it purges filament to flush it away and change materials. And then after it's done analyzing that data that it just collected, it extrudes a little bit of filament, but not very much, not enough to weigh that extrusion down and fall into the poop chute. And then it tries to rub that filament off on the nozzle wiper, and more than half the time, it is not successful. And what can happen a lot of times is it will then pull this piece of filament that's still stuck to the nozzle to your model that you're printing on and it will print that piece of filament into your model. And as a result of this, what I have done on all four of my printers is turn off the first layer inspection just so that I can avoid this happening. So again, I would consider this a design flaw on the X1 Carbon. However, as I said before, Bamboo learns from its mistakes. Over the last couple of years, they've released more printer models. One of them was the A1. The A1 has a nozzle wiper that looks kind of like a silicone toothbrush. The nozzle rubs across it, and it successfully knocks any extruded filament off of the nozzle almost 100% of the time. Well, I went on to Maker World to look for a solution to this problem for the X1 Carbon. And if you own a bamboo printer and you haven't been to Maker World, what have you been doing on the internet? I found a new nozzle wiper for the X1 Carbon designed by a designer named Maleko? Malico? I don't know, but it's right here. And this person designed a way to replace the nozzle wiper on the X1 Carbon with something more akin to the nozzle wiper on the A1. So I applied the solution to one of my printers and seriously, it makes all the difference in the world. In fact, I've re-enabled the first layer inspection feature on the printer because it's no longer an issue. And now that I've found success with it, I want to share this with you so that you can also do this to your X1 Carbon if this has been an issue for you. Now, I've already printed one of these parts and I've already added the little silicone brush here. Basically, you'll have to go onto Bamboo's website and order the wiper 
replacement for the A1. And you get a set of three and it's very inexpensive. But when you finally get it, you'll want to cut it down to size. So four rows of two teeth on the brush or whatever you want to call them for lack of a better word and then it has a sticky back so you'll just stick it right in right in there and um, some will say to use some super glue I found that I don't need it um, the sticky back on the brush works just fine and you'll want to print this in something durable like pet G um, because it's gonna it's gonna need to be able to take some abuse PLA is not a good filament to use for something like this. I also wanted to point out that when it prints, it prints like this. When you open it in Bamboo Studio, it'll be set to print like this. And you can see here, this part is raised up above this part. So you are going to need to support this. Also, right here where the brush goes, I mean, it goes up in there a little way, so that will also need to be supported. If you haven't watched my video on using PETG as a support interface for PLA, I advise you to go and watch that. It'll explain how to uh, make it so that you can use PETG to support, um, to support a PLA print and be able to print right on the support so you don't get any of the nastiness from where you would remove the supports from. Now, this was printed in PETG, so basically you'd use PLA as a support for PETG. But I already have the part printed, so let's go and put it on the printer. So this operation is gonna require two tools, both of which came with your printer when you received it. So one is this larger, Allen key and then the other is the smaller one so you'll remove the PTFE tube with this larger one and then these two screws you'll remove with the smaller one and then you'll be putting in these two screws again once you have the new part installed and this will just stay out so first off Let's go ahead and remove this. It's one screw. Let me get my gorilla hands out of the way here. So one screw and it's gone. Next, I'll use a smaller Allen key to remove these two screws. and those are gone. Now, by the way, I've used the controls on the touch screen to move my print head out to the right and forward so that I can expose this better and be able to work around and not have to dodge the print head. So you can use the touch screen to do that. Uh, you may need to home the uh, the print head before it allows you to do that but it's it's easier if you just get the print head out of the way altogether now i've got our part here we're gonna just put it in it's easier i found if you put these parts in first and push it to the back and then you can just kind of slide this down these holes will go over those screw holes and now you just replace the screws And so now that these screws have been replaced, you have a new brush head here. And when the nozzle needs to get wiped, it'll wipe across that. And it'll instantly knock off any filament that's still stuck onto the nozzle. The old, um, the old wiper obviously does not get reinstalled. And you're done. And that's it. 
I'll leave a link to this A1 wiper on Bamboo Labs website so you can get to it easily. I'll also leave a link to this model that I used to uh, print this solution. So I found this helpful and I hope you did too. If you did, I would ask you to give this video a like. And if you ever find any of my content helpful or in any way, shape or form interesting, please consider subscribing. And if you have a 3D printer, you already know what to do. Go out there and make something awesome.